Joining me now to talk about that, as well as some of the Democrats' shenanigans on Capitol Hill this week, is counselor to the president, Kellyanne Conway. Kellyanne, thanks so much for being here tonight. First things first, what is the White Hi, House hearing about Kim Jong-un, and has the president reached out to anyone? Hi. I will not comment on that. The president will make any announcement about a head of state. I will just tell you that all of us, Janine, will get our credible information offline, not online. And echoing what Senator Graham just said, the offer that President Trump made to North Korea, really his entire presidency stands, that there can be great economic liberation and opportunity for the people of North Korea. And we'd be willing to help with that, but there would be have to be so many conditions met first, not least of which is what the president has been working toward for all three years, which is the verifiable, complete denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. And the president is very firm on that as he's tried to broker a deal in that way. He has, re he has placed sanctions. They have remained on North Korea, and we've been pretty tough on them mm -hmm. as well. But as to the health condition of, of a foreign leader, I'm going to leave that to the National Security Council or the president himself to make any announcements. Right. Okay. I, I understand that, but it is qu highly unusual for him uh, to be as absent as he has been. And, and I'm going to, to ask you about something that's just come out this evening in the Wall Street Journal, and that is that the White House is planning on replacing Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. Uh, that is uh, more than just online. It's in the Wall Street Journal. What say you to that? <laughs> Well, what I would say to that is Secretary mm -hmm. Azar has served for over two years, was in the Situation Room yesterday at the task force briefing, was there, I think, most of the week, uh, and of course is, is a big part of that. He oversees a, a, a huge budget, over 60,000 employees, and the CDC, the FDA, SAMHSA, NIH, they're all connected to, if not reporting in some at some level, to the HHS secretary. What I find uh, very curious and a bit disappointing is every time I read a story about a personnel change, these days it has to do with somebody who has oversight over the pandemic. And it's very unfortunate to me that you have people, some people, wishing or willing that Dr. Fauci will be silent or Dr. Birx will quit or they'll no longer be around or the secretary of HHS will be replaced in the middle of this president handling a global pandemic. I mean, that, think about what you're wishing some people. Well, you, that you would know not what, be Kelly a good Ann, thing. Kellyanne, you, you make a good point. You make a good point. And, and, and I understand that, that where, where you're coming from and where you're going. So let's hit it on Joe Biden then, okay? Now, Joe Biden apparently has come out and he said that, um, I think the exact quote is something like, uh, he's not really happy with the $2 trillion and he wants a hell of a lot more, that's quote, than $2 trillion. And uh, he said that today. I mean, uh, is this all about printing more money? Uh, is he, uh, is the man focused, delirious, is, uh, does he know what's going on? Uh, he does in this way. He's trying to kowtow and capitulate to the far left that has overtaken the, the Democratic Party. The irony, Janine, is that in saying this to a wide-ranging interview to Politico today, Joe Biden sounds like many of the far left candidates he beat in the primary. And now he's trying to sound like them, even though he was able to become the front runner again after a year of being the front runner. It was a little circuitous. But uh, he's really being, he's giving into the craven elements of his party for which there's never enough money. And what I found really curious and regrettable about Joe Biden's interview is that he was talking about the things he'd want to invest in, and frankly, they have nothing to do with ridding us of the coronavirus and making sure that we have a vaccine, therapeutics, that we can we can count on any hospital surge or ventilator surge if in fact there's another hot spot somewhere. But as we start to reopen pieces of the economy state by state, city by city when it's appropriate and when the phases are met, that's what Joe Biden should be focused on. But it was, you know, he was cursing in the interview. Of course he had a had attacked the president, but he really didn't offer any solutions. What he offered was the typical grab bag of the Green New Deal. There was a report a few short months ago that's, that suggested households in some of the key states would be up to $50,000, $75,000 per cost per household if we over 
time if we actually put the Green New Deal in effect. And may I remind everyone, Janine, they were all kowtowing to AOC, who I think her power has really been diminished. Bernie Sanders is not the nominee. Mm -hmm. Nancy Pelosi doesn't pay much attention to her. Nobody followed her when she voted against the latest uh, the latest economic package. But when she she would said we need the Green New Deal, they said that's a great idea, great idea. They put it to a vote in the Senate. Janine, remember this one? How many votes did it get? Yes. Zero. If you rounded that to next nearest yeah. number, that would be zero. And now you've got Joe Biden running on this platform, <laughs> so it makes no sense. President Trump is making sure that our small businesses, our distressed industries, our, our needed our, the individuals in need are getting that money through the CARES Act. And we just got a new cash infusion, 100 billion more for 75 billion more for hospitals, 25 billion more for research, including vaccines, and then of course 300 billion plus more for our small businesses. That's what you want to okay. do with the money coming out this. of the government. Ke Tied people Kellyanne, over. Kellyanne, very quickly, and I've only got 30 seconds now, you know, this whole idea of, uh, and the latest thing to come out on uh, Larry King, where the mother of the Tara Reid, the woman who's made the allegation against Joe Biden, uh, is calling into uh, Larry King, complaining about her daughter having a problem with uh, a senator. I mean, uh, how do you think the Democrats actually uh, actually can, can look at themselves when they are so critical of Republicans with no evidence, and they've got the guy running for president who's being accused uh, of, of sexual harassment, if not worse. Two things going on here, neither of which is good for the Democratic Party, Janine. The first is the obvious, the whole Me Too movement, the people who absolutely believed this person or that person with very thin or, or no evidence because of their political leanings and because of whom they were trying to stop from the Supreme Court or, or from the presidency. Uh, so they, they are not on solid ground here. They're being completely disingenuous and hypocritical by not even giving this woman her due. The second part is you have a lot of Democrats trying to push Joe Biden out of the race. They didn't want him to be the nominee. Now they're stuck with him, and they're using this as a backdoor excuse mm -hmm. to They've maybe call into it. question, can mm -hmm. we afford this kind, yes, that's right, can we afford this kind of a possible scandalabra leading into the election? Uh, and you know, Biden and Hyden, these All last right. few weeks has really helped him. And when he comes back out, he's gonna have to debate mm -hmm. Donald Trump and answer okay. questions about Tara Reid and other people. All right, Kellyanne Conway, thanks for being with us.